morning. My name is Ramesh. I am an associate professor working for the National Institute of Rural Development in Panchayat Raj. This session today, Participatory Rural Appraisal, PRA for short. This presentation is about the basic principles of PRA, the attitude required for a PRA practitioner, and PRA methods and techniques used in rural development practice and planning, and uh, an illustration of PRA application in water and sanitation project. And uh, when I prepared this presentation, my main audience in mind was participating institutions of Urnad Bharat Abhiyan, UBA. In UBA program, higher education institutions in India, they are adopting villages and they want to transmit knowledge or technologies, models they have in their laboratories or in their colleges and technical institutions in the villages. So they want to translate their knowledge and technologies into the village. But when it comes to reality, approaching a village, it becomes a little difficult because it is new for them. So this presentation is mainly for participating institutions of Unnad Bharat Abhiyan, UBA, and it gives them an idea of participatory rural appraisal and how to apply participatory rural appraisal in a rural setting. How do we collect data? How do we do planning? All that. That's what this presentation aims at. Imagine you are assigned the task of planning for development of a village. And to be able to plan development projects, what do you think you need in the first place? You need funds. Maybe you need funds to implement plan, but that's later. The first thing that you need is data and information. You need data, you need information to be able to plan for that village. How do you get this data? There are several ways or several sources of data. For one can be household survey. This can be one of the sources of data. You can go for a door-to-door -door survey of the village and collect the data required. And number two, rural development tourism. We think we are busy and we have very little time. Therefore, we pay a quick visit to a village. Talk to a few people there we happen to meet and then get some impressions about the village and uh, try to collect whatever data you can. And with that, you try to plan for that village. And the third way of collecting data is from the official records. Like you can see if there are any official records available with the Gram Panchayat or with the Block Development Office. And through that, you can try to get some data information you need. The fourth source is government database and websites. For example, you have the Ministry of Rural Development, you have Ministry of Panchayati Raj, you have Ministry of Agriculture, and they have their uh, databases. For example, the one you see, Mission Antyodhya, is the one you see in the slide. That's an important source of data, and that can be used also for obtaining whatever information you want to take. And you must see that uh, whatever I have listed out, the three, four ways of collecting data, it can be house to house survey, it can be a rural development tourism, it can be official records, or it can be website. In all these, there are limitations, we must say also. For example, in door to door survey, it takes long time to collect. You need to go door to door, every house, collecting data. And you have to write the report and then lay down a plan. All that takes long time. And then again, official records, websites, you do not know how dynamic they are. So all said and done, and they are extractive also in nature. When you go for door to door survey or when you go for official records, they all become extractive. They are not suitable for participatory assessment of the situations and conditions in the village. So what we advocate is, it is good to go for a PRA, participatory rural appraisal. And PRA is a set of methods and techniques that development practitioners use in the field to be able to collect data and information. It is fairly quick, easy to collect data and information you need. It enables you to get closer to the rural community, which makes way for you to plan plan in a participatory mode using the data the villagers gave you. There are two advantages using PRA. One is that you are able to collect your data fairly quickly. The second is that you are also able to get closer to the people. And number three, I would add also that you are able to plan in a participatory mode. So PRA, a favorite method with many NGOs. And also you can understand being used by the government institutions also for the purposes of development planning. In the last two decades, PRA is extensively used in many programs of the government. So PRA is a set of methods and tools to collect data and information about a village situation rapidly. It is an approach with certain principles when you put to work. It brings reliable data within a short span of time. It enables getting closer to the community. So I would say PRA is a set of methods. PRA is an approach. PRA is a set of attitude and behavior. 
So the more you internalize it, the more you tend to become a good field worker and also a sensitive human being. It is possible to collect any data and make a rapid participatory assessment of situations and conditions using PRA methods and techniques. So during PRA, what we do as facilitators, as outsiders, as people going from an institution, what we do and what the villagers do. The villagers, they do the mapping. It is their mapping, it is their diagramming, it is their listing, it is their sorting, their sequencing, their counting, their estimating, their scoring, their ranking, their linking, their analyzing, their planning and their action program. So they do the planning, they do everything. It can be counting, estimating, ranking, analyzing, linking, whatever. It is, it is they who do that. All we do as external persons or, or outsiders is that we facilitate. And this is possible when you have internalized certain principles of PRA. Like for example, one of the principles of PRA is reversal of learning. By reversal of learning, what we mean is we learn from the villagers. I say a reversal because we have always been teaching. Now we are going to learn from them. So I call this reversal of learning. So we learn from the villagers, the situations and conditions. The understanding is a villager who has lived in that village, he knows about that village much better than you and I. This is one understanding we need to have. And the second is learning rapidly and progressively. You are there for a short time, three hours or four hours, that's all. Within that short span of time, rapidly, you are going to learn progressively about a subject. And that's another principle. And the third principle is, do not get at precise information. And it happens often that we want to get at precise information. Ensure that the data given is approximately correct and reliable and it is true. Just verify to that extent that's enough. And there are ways of cross-checking the data also. Cross-checking the data with others to ensure its validity. That is possible always. And also when you ask questions, you must see that you ensure a sequence. There must be sequence in your line of questioning. When you have asked, started asking questions about school, school education, school children, girl children in the school, boys in the school, school facilities, go with that line. When you have started asking about animal, animal health and the grass and fodder for animal, just go in that line. So once you have taken a set of questions, go in a sequence and uh, let us not be jumping from health to education to animal husbandry to agriculture. Let us not be jumping from one area to another, one sector to another. Always remember and do not interrupt unless you seek some clarification and uh, or more description or explanation you need, you can ask them to talk. You listen, learn and record and use that information for planning. So bear in mind the principle of PRA is that you are going to learn from the villagers and whatever you have learned and you convert them in the form of data and information to be able to do your planning. So that's the purpose and this understanding we need to have about PRA and the PRA Methods, when you talk about methods and based on what you need, what data you require, you, you need to go with a checklist. What kind of data you need? If your study is about school education and your checklist must be about school education. If your study is about agriculture, have a checklist about agriculture. So go with a checklist so that it helps you in your semi-structured interviewing. So that you don't forget what you wanted to ask after coming back to your uh, college or university. So that way we go with a checklist. And all the interactions that happen there, it all becomes semi-structured interviewing. It is semi-structured because you are going there with a checklist in hand and your questions are going to be from the checklist you have. So based on the objectives of PRA, the practitioner has to choose PRA methods. You need to choose your PRA method, which method you want to use. So PRA methods have been beneficially used in data generation of any kind of study. It can be health, it can be agriculture, animal husbandry, school education, any kind of uh, situation this is successfully employed. And if I can just list out a few PRA methods, uh, PRA has over 50 methods and tools. For example, we have transect walk, social mapping, resource mapping, problem inventory, preparation of NSL chart, seasonality analysis. We can list about 100 uh, methods. In this uh, particular session, I have come with some four or five methods only, which will be of use for the UBA participating institutions, as I mentioned before. And because my purpose is that the UBA institutions, when they go to village, when they adopt a village, when they want to work in a village, they must have an understanding of how to get along with the villages, how to collect information or data for the purpose of planning. So the first one I would want to introduce is establishing a rapport. When we want to do PRA in a village, we cannot straight away start with PRA on day one. 
what we need to do is we need to establish rapport that is the first thing it is important that we visit the village at least a day in advance and establish rapport with the key informants there and it can be a panchayat president or it can be some local leader or it can be a school teacher it can be an anganwadi teacher so meet them greet them say hello right that is the first thing and this is introducing yourself and seeking their cooperation and support to participate in the pr exercises that you would want to involve them the next day perhaps so the key informants can be local panchayat functionaries self help group leaders school and asha workers anganwadi workers progressive farmers etc so this helps in establishing rapport and introducing yourself so that the next day you go and start your pr exercise one so pr exercise one i would suggest is transect walk transect walk means you can walk in all the streets in the farms if they are nearby and observe during transect walk right this is for you to have a general understanding of the village the topography of the village and the settlements there and the house type there so you need to have a walk in the village and it is an observational walk to get to know the type of house cattle water supply toilet drainage cleanliness type of crops grown activities women are involved in the school the anganwadi health center you get to see all these when you walk in the village you must also bear in mind when you walk i say you observe i'm not saying you need to watch an observation always involves a discussion discuss about anything that you come across and observation is not watching and assuming this you must understand and second is sequencing your questions this we already discussed i i believe and if you find a cattle in almost every house when you walk in the street then you can start a line of questioning related to cattle if you find women collecting water from a common water collection point then you probe sources of water availability of water during summer scarcity adequacy quality water management etc so if you find some uh, farmers artisans crafts persons start questioning with all the enthusiasm to learn from their work and life so try your hands in the tools they have maybe you can have some fun with them they like teaching the, the villagers like teaching the craft that they are involved in and appreciate their work so that way you are getting closer to the people at the same time you are also collecting data and the second one i would say is social mapping this is getting the villagers draw a social map of that village social map is an excellent tool to collect a wealth of information you can collect demographic particulars like the population households and the social particulars like settlement pattern infrastructure details road light water etc and school going children dropouts and the child labor any any information you can bring in that social map so the villagers draw it on the ground you can copy it on a chart for your purposes and this is a sample of a social map drawn in a village and they have drawn all the roads they have drawn all the houses there and they have drawn all the facilities available like where is the hand pump where is the piped water supply where are the toilets where are the schools where is anganwadi so they have drawn all these it has come on the ground now we have taken copied this for our purpose on a chart yes this is a social map in progress and also we are taking data from the social map so how do we do this exercise so we need to find a common place where everyone can participate have some 10 15 participants ask them about the number of streets number of houses various common assets like school health center anganwadi water tank panchayat office etc invite them to draw on the ground the main streets and then the lanes ask them to mark one by one the school the panchayat building the health center water tanks hand pump locations etc then get them to draw the houses street by street number the houses and for every house have a card and collect all the details you want about a given house so for example imagine the purpose of your pri is to do with water and sanitation you, after the map has come on the ground you can start asking how many houses have functional tap connection for water supply mark which are these houses on this map you you mark which are these houses how many households depend on common water collection point or hand pump mark on this map how many water collection points are there how frequently people get water the quality of water dependability purification chlorination arrangement so all these you can start talking about all these and how many houses have toilets how many in use how many don't use how many don't have at all so such things you will be able to collect all these in the social map and the next i would say is problem inventory you are asking them to list out the problems they have right so you can have again the same 10 15 local people and seated in a half circle manner ask them 
about their pressing problem in the village with regard to agriculture, seeds, cattle, drinking water, health care, animal husbandry, technology application in agriculture or local crafts, you can ask them whatever problems that they want to discuss with you. And let them write each problem in a card, in a postcard size card and observe, cross check and probe. Do not interrupt. It's their problem, so it must be their list. Let them list out all the problems they have. So one problem in each card. This is something you must remember. When they mention about a problem, let them write one problem in a card. That way you can prepare even 17, 1800 cards, no problem. The next is, once they have written all the problems in the cards, now ask them to start out in an NSL chart. We call it NSL chart. And uh, if they have to be taken up for action, they need to tell you, this is a typical NSL chart here, now, soon, later. And now, whatever cards that they prepared, problem cards, let them place the cards in any one of these boxes. So, naturally, the problems that are pressing, they will put in now. Problems that can be taken up a little later, they will put in one year. And the problem that can be laid, taken much later, they will put in later. So, that way, you get three classifications of the problems they told you. So, this is a way of prioritizing. So, now you have identified the local problems, you have got their priorities also, where you got to know their most pressing problems, which ones require urgent action, maybe within the next six months you have identified through them. Find if there are any local solutions they are able to think of, where you need to play the facilitator role along with the panchayats. And if you have to address the problem, ask them in what way they shall contribute in terms of time, finance, participation mobilizing and abiding by what is agreed. And the final one I would say is about analysis group discussion. This is a large forum of the community where you can have as many local people as possible. Let one of the local persons announce about the discussions held starting from the social map, problem analysis, problem prioritization, now soon later chart. So let them explain, let one of the local persons explain to everyone about the discussions held and the decisions arrived at. So let everyone knows the decisions and if anyone has difference of opinion, it is for the local leaders to sort out there. This makes things clear for everyone and you can explain your position in what way you are trying to resolve that issue and your expectation of their participation in the planning, implementation and in taking charge of sustaining the benefits. One of the things that you can ask here is that yes, so this is a way to collect data. We are discussing with the people. Yes, we collect data information from the people. And from there, we are arriving at their problems and then sorting out. All that is fine, but how about the accuracy of the data? So, PRA uses focus group discussions. We go for chain of interviews, life histories, case studies, direct observations and all. And the data and information generated through PRA methods are mostly qualitative in nature. And in PRA, you must understand, we do not aim at accuracy of data. Rather, we seek data that is first-hand, that is reliable, and we say it is better to be approximately right than precisely wrong. So that way, you need to take this for accuracy. The second thing is, you need to be alert also while facilitating. If they are giving you any false information, or is it a rumor they are giving you, or a hearsay, those things also you need to be alert about. So you need to probe using five helpers. By helpers, what I mean is, when they tell you something, ask, what is this? Can you explain where it has happened? When? How? Why, why do you say that? So that way, you need to probe. It is not that they tell you something, you record and come away. You need to probe those things. So in this session, we have seen a simple set of PRA tools and methods that somebody can put to use. You can consider PRA is a way of dealing with rural people and involving rural people that you are collecting information about them and the analysis also takes place with them and with them you are going to come out with a solution and whatever technical solutions you have you are free to offer to them there quality of your field work and planning is in the quality of peer exercise you do